Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and a new Elden Ring tier list video for patch 1.09 where many weapon types were buffed or in fact quite a lot were nerfed. There was also a very important batch of changes for PvP specific stuff that affected some faith weapons in particular. So things have changed, we're back to update the list as well as a few suggestions from you guys. As always we have C, B, A and S but if it makes it onto this list that means I think it's a very good weapon in what it does. With that in mind we'll start from the bottom with Gargoyle Black Blade which has just made it onto the list for the first time. This has been requested a couple times in the comments and it's finally getting in here. Overall it's a good pick when dealing with enemies who have a lot of health, similar to why you'd pick Black Fire or Destined Death. As a great sword it's been buffed in 1.09. The attack speed of various attacks as well as the range and recovery has been improved which is feeling nice but it's the ash, the corpse, wax, cutter that is in a better state since 1.07. It's a sort of reasonable ranged downward slam that can then sap enemy health for two seconds over time. The ash was improved in 1.07 to be cheaper on the FP and reach a bit further and also take less time so it goes out quicker but it's still a bit close to short range that range that it has so it's best used right up against the boss for the weapon to hit as well for max damage. Unfortunately this thing is still very power creep by things like black fire and destined death options that exist but it does deserve an acknowledgement because it's in a much better state and it's pretty effective at what it does. Next in the C tier is going to be the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. This comes down to specifically how much DPS you can get out of this Ash of War with the right build and setup in PvE. With certain bosses, you can absolutely chunk out boss health. And considering it's arguably one of the highest DPS options that you can run in that specific build that we actually have a video about, it needs at least an acknowledgement. It might not be amazing in PvP, and it might not be generally a great weapon or that interesting in design, but you can't deny that it has really high DPS potential so it needs an acknowledgement as a faith weapon. Lastly down in C is the inseparable sword, which actually was in B before, but it really should have been in C. Not because it's worse this patch, great swords have actually been buffed in this patch. They buffed the speed, range and recovery time for various attacks, which is feeling nice. But this weapon in particular just really shouldn't be higher than C. It deserves an acknowledgement because it's good at what it does, but the fact is the banished knight sword exists and it can do the same thing with better AR and have the very same ash that the inseparable sword has. So. Ultimately, it's an outclassed weapon, which I really dislike. So maybe they should buff this in particular. Maybe it's scaling and that would make it more relevant. I still want to talk about it because it is awesome when using it. It's just technically you could do the same thing but better with another weapon and that sucks. Moving up to B though, a new addition to the tier, we have the Beast Claw Hammer. This weapon was previously all about its high damage, great range Ash of War, a sort of cone of bestial style physical damage working great in all content generally. The downside is the weapon type Great Hammer being very weak. That that was buffed in a big way in 1.07, with better speed, range and recovery time to various attacks, it's feeling a lot smoother. However, the thing is, when you use it in one hand, it goes quick enough and does enough poise damage to have a true combo. Meaning if you hit someone in PvP, that will stagger them long enough for you to guarantee hit them again with another one hand combo. That's awesome, but the damage is still a bit meh for the weapon itself, not going to hit like a truck. The ash is where the strength is, but with the improved feel of the moveset, it's in a much better place. Next up from C to B is Marika's Hammer. With the nice buffs to this weapon type in 1.09, various speed, recovery and even attribute scaling and aspects. It is hitting like a truck with the Ash of War, but feeling a bit smoother as a weapon and moveset. A few patches back, the Ash was majorly improved to come out faster, and it has this really respectable poise armor when you're hanging in the air, meaning it's very likely to go through. Just looking at it, it's hard to deny that the burst of the hit of the Ash is huge, and though it is holy damage which does fall off in Elden Ring in PvE late game, it still has some serious stopping power that can even stagger bosses with the Ash hit. Basically, you entirely rely on the Ash for damage in PvE, but you're now better benefit from the improved moveset otherwise, but I'm not convinced this is a great weapon for PvP unless you can hit that ash, but it's really predictable and very easy to roll, so it has those issues. So great in PvE, not so great in PvP, B feels a fair rating. Down a tier is the Cypher Pata or the Coded Fist Weapon. This is because of, well, multiple reasons. Most importantly is the nerf of fist weapons in PvP. They nerfed the poise damage of running heavy and basic heavy attacks, which was basically the lifeline this weapon had to actually start trades or get any combo going in PvP. PvP. So it's a specific niche 
Pretty nasty nerf for this playstyle. It only affects PvP though, so the weapons are still good, just noticeably worse in PvP, but this is a 100% holy damage weapon. Again, that is an issue in PvE in the late game. Also, it's kind of overshadowed by the straight sword version of this weapon, the coded sword, but it's still pretty good and worthy of being on the list. Also in beta, still without really any changes to these two weapons, the Wing Scythe and Halo Scythe, with nothing really changing for these weapons this patch. I'll quickly say they're feeling better since 1.08, where they improved the Reaper speed and recovery for various attacks, and the utility of these weapons, say the Halo Scythe with its range ability, or the fact that you can stop healing for a bit with the Wing Scythe, Ash, that's nice. The Reaper moveset's fine, and with reasonable range behind it. I just find it a bit dry to play, not crazy powerful. They're good, which is why they're on the list, but at a reasonable B. Also at B is the Blade of Calling. Since the buff to daggers in 1.08, they are in a really good place, and weirdly they weren't changed in any way in this patch, like Fists and Claws were. Compared to another Faith Dagger on this list, just overshadowed. It does the same thing, but actually with more poise damage, knocking enemies down or staggering them really well with the Ash. And so it's a solid option, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just a bit overshadowed by another weapon that has better scaling, a better output, which we'll talk about. Last for B, just barely hanging on, arguably you could put this at C, is Vike's War Spear. Still a solid weapon and a great madness build weapon pick naturally. However, the fact is spears are worse in 1.09. They reduce the hitbox size, so the phantom range of spears is all but gone and it's noticeable surely in PvP, but it's still a good weapon generally. However, since the madness nurse from many patches ago, it's still in a bit of a strange spot as one of the best weapons for a madness build, but madness builds and madness weapons aren't great right now. Moving up to A though, we've got loads of weapons in this tier, starting with an exciting one, the Magma Blade. Since the amazing Amazing buff to curved swords in 1.09 we have improved running attack speed recovery time and even the first attack of the combo that's faster for some reason too I am bewildered by this buff to this weapon type and the magma blade is no exception with this buff it just feels better the ash has always been a great combo tool say due to its hyper arm and the fact that you leave the uh, lava on the ground for trading now it just works better with more DPS potential smoother playstyle more aggression with the faster running attacks which was already one of the best in the game already. I don't really know why it got buffed, but it did, and so it's in a really good place, and I put it at high A for that reason. Much like the Magma Worm Scale Sword, which is a curved greatsword. That weapon type also had a fantastic buff in 1.09, with improved speed range and recovery on various attacks. This thing is just much more effective in 1.09. The range is what impresses me most, of this longer weapon having better range. You catch people even when you think you're going to miss, and the greater speed means you can trade more effectively or get more hits off. This is already a trade focused weapon in PvP, thanks to the buff of 1.07 where they made the weapon's ash have really high poise and stamina attack. So now, this weapon becomes a bit more of an all-rounder and really dangerous at that. A high damage weapon with a scary ash, but it also has a unique heavy, sort of a guillotine slam, which you can even do from jumping with a plunge attack. There is big damage behind that and big poise damage as well. So I think this is another good weapon that's been made even better, and now it's reaching the point where I'm like, could it even be an S tier? So in a very good place now. Also rated very high in A then is the Coded Sword. Straight Swords had a buff in 1.09, which is great for an already fast weapon. They improved the running attack speed recovery time, and the first attack of the regular combo is quicker too, which were already really quick, dealing nice bursts of damage if you could get a combo off. However, with their lower poise of Straight Swords, it's a bit hard to do in PvP. In PvE, it's consistent and amazing damage, and now it's just better. And this is off the back of the 1.07 buff to the Ash of War, where the FP cost is down and the motion speed of the ash is much better making it a real threat and really powerful in both pvp and pve at this point though the poise being low in pvp and the holy only damage that's an issue in the late game pve these two things are probably keeping it from an s tier but it is in a really good place now next in the a tier then is god slayer's great sword which i've actually brought down from an s tier to an a just because i feel i've overrated it in terms of the output and potential that it has i do think it's a really good sword but the other Colossal Sword I'm going to talk about not being S means this really shouldn't be either. Nothing really has changed for this though. It's still a great move set with the black fire damage on the Ash and good reach. And you can even roll to cancel the Ash for feints or just getting out of a tough situation. I do really like this weapon. But just like the other Colossal Sword, Malakef's Black Blade, if that's not S tier, neither of them really should be. It's in a better place since a previous patch where they made it so the Destined Death debuff lasts a full minute, which is great. And as a triple hit Ash of War that has some hyper armor, it's great for trading. The 
damage is fine, the range is great, Colossal Swords are awesome, but neither of them have insane DPS or output, they're just consistent and powerful with high poise to them. I like them both a lot, compared to the other two weapons at S tier, I just feel they're not as strong, so they really should be A tier. Our next A tier weapon then is the Golden Order Greatsword, which was an A tier last time. Strong conceptually, but it's a bit slow to go off with the Ash of War, even after they've sped up the animation. You have the pop around you and then the arc. If we could just get to that arc shot straight away, this would be so much better than it is. But ultimately, it's very predictable and easy to avoid in PvP. Even if it has great poise damage on that Ash, it deals good damage. It is better this patch though, with the Greatsword buffs, with the speed range and recovery time of various attacks being better. And I do really like the weapon, that's why it's A. Also in A is Ordovis's Greatsword, which is fantastic since 1.07, where the Ash of War was made really quick and really effective and super satisfying to use. Even just relying on that Ash alone for PvE and PvP can be pretty effective, and it's a really cool animation. Great Swords also had that buff again, so this is doing very well this patch. Again, a bit limited by its holy damage on the Ash and how that falls off in PvE, but overall, I really like this weapon. Next in the A tier then is Siluria's Tree, which is a great weapon with an incredible Ash of War. But it is weaker this patch somewhat. The 1.09 nerfs have the hitbox size of this weapon type, the Great Spear, reaching a little bit less far with less phantom range, and that sucks and you do feel it. Overall though, it's Ash of War and its ability to deal big bursts of damage, which when charged can go really far and pierce targets for very strong AoE potential. Sniping with that in say free for all makes you a real menace due to the long range of big bursts that it provides. And while the weapon type can't reach as far as it used to, it is a still very effective and fun weapon to use. And I can't really bring it down a tier with that in mind. Now there was one weapon that I was going to put in A tier, but I'm actually going to put it into B, probably at the top of B, and that's Envoy's Longhorn. This hilarious big boss crusher has been technically buffed this patch, with the Great Hammers having better speed range and recovery time. But the fact is, you're only really using this weapon for its Ash of War for its insane DPS. When you're mashing tons of bubbles into a target, the larger target the better because more bubbles will hit it. It's feeling a bit smoother though because of that, but the whole reason again is using the Ash to do DPS so it doesn't really matter. Very strong PvE DPS weapon, and not really that relevant in PvP, so B feels a bit fairer. Lucky for me, while I was editing this, I realized I'd actually forgot one weapon, the Sacred Relic Sword, and I think the reason I forgot it is because it's actually not in all of these weapons in this specific tier list for some reason, so I guess I just missed it. With that in mind, we're using this as a placeholder, and it still stays in A. This weapon in its Ash of War had a specific PvP nerf this patch. They decreased the damage and poise damage of Wave of Gold, depending on how far it goes over a certain distance. Basically, you can't deal as much damage or knockdown to the extended ranges, where this has been a nightmare in free-for-all PvP. It specifically nerfs that and in a pretty well done way without affecting it in PvE at all. An important change and well implemented. And with this being technically better, this patch with the great sword buffs of speed, uh, range and recovery time on various attacks, it's better and worse this patch. So staying in A, it seems fair enough. Lastly though, it's not exactly a secret. We have our two last weapons for S tier. Firstly, the Blast of Blade. I don't need to say anything about this. Somehow it was buffed in this patch, you know, the great sword buff of speed range and recovery time to various attacks. Can't believe this weapon was buffed. Yeah, it's the most overtuned weapon in the game with all of the passives, the lifesteal, lifesteal and kill, the fire damage, the long reaching ash of war that's wide as hell. We all know this is basically the best weapon in the game because it's just got so much power and so much in one weapon. To say that it was buffed this patch is crazy and yet it has been buffed. So there you go. Lastly though, the black knife that weapon, that dagger that overshadows the Blade of Calling. With daggers not being changed this patch, it's still ridiculously good, and in my opinion, it's still the best source of Destined Death with its Hyper Armor ranged 60 second Destined Death debuff. It's in an incredible place as this dagger, and it just has a higher DPS potential than say Blade of Calling as well because of its deck scaling. But since it's not really changed this patch, there's not more to say about it. It's just absolutely fantastic. But there you go, that is our full tier list for 1.09. What's changed and what's made it to the list newly or gone up or down like i said quite a lot of changes this time if there are any weapons that i've forgotten to include and why do you think they're good then let me know but for now that's the tier list i've been hollow you've been you thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye